there will be times where we gather information from a sample and then want to use the information that we have from the sample to calculate certain probabilities and also just to demonstrate how we might get probabilities from information organized in this manner. So here I have a table where it was an experiment done where people were exposed to poison ivy by rubbing the oil on their skin. For the, this group, there were a thousand people in the study and 500 of them, they washed off the oil from the poison ivy within five minutes after rubbing it onto their skin. And for the other 500 out of the thousand, they waited until after five minutes to rub or to wash the oil off of their skin. And then they looked at what the reactions were to the poison ivy, whether they had no reaction, whether there was a mild reaction, or whether there was a strong reaction. And all of this information then was organized on the table. Now the table might not have the row or column totals given to you. They might just give the categories and how many fell within each category. And if that were the case, then it would be your job to add together the rows to get your row total and add together the numbers in the columns to get your column total. And then you'd have your overall number of um, people in the group that you did the study on. But in this one, all of those additions are already done. Now, if the information is organized in a table like this, then we can actually answer probability questions just off the table. So for example, if we we're asked if a person is selected at random from this group of 1,000 people to find the probability that there's no allergic reaction, then what I would want to do is find between the column headings or the row headings what fits this requirement. So no allergic reaction would be the no reaction, and so that would be the total from this row, which is 470, as our favorable, divided by the total of 1,000, so we would have 470 over 1,000 for that probability. Now we would want to simplify our fraction, but just so that you can see where this is from, I'm going to leave it in an unsimplified form for this segment. The next question for probability of the same setup is find the probability that there's a strong reaction. So again, I look and see where I have strong reaction, and it's this entire row. So the total of that row is 140 and divided by the total of 1,000. So I have my 140 over 1,000 is my probability. Part C says, find the probability that there's no reaction and the oil is washed off within five minutes. Now normally when I have and as my compound event when I'm asked the probability, I, need to, I could use the formula for the probability of A and B and use the multiplication that's appropriate, whether they're dependent or independent events. But if I have it on a table, I can actually just go to the sample space organization here and pull out the probability. So these number of subjects that had met both requirements of no reaction and the oil is washed off within five minutes has to be across from the none as well as underneath the washed off within five minutes. So that would be 420 out of the total group of 1,000. So that would be the answer to that probability question. And again, make sure that when you do give a final answer um, for a test or assignments or in a report that you want to give it in simplified form. If you want to go to decimal form, answer it to three significant digits most generally. And if you want to go to the percent form, you could also do that. Part D, find the probability that there's no reaction given that the oil is washed off within five minutes. This is a conditional probability question. So when they're giving us information, we need to make sure that we remember that we want to find the probability knowing that. Now again, we could use the formula for the conditional probability or, because this is done in a table organization, I can actually just use the table, the advantage of that, to answer this probability question. It's very important that you realize the difference between the compound event and between and when we're doing the conditional with the word given. 
They mean entirely different things when we're talking about them with our probabilities. So here, the probability of no reaction, given that the oil is washed off within five minutes. Look at what's after the word given. Given is, this is the information of the group you're going to look at. Those where the oil was washed off within five minutes. So I find within five minutes, and I'm just looking in this column. Now what's the probability just in this column that you have no reaction? So it's 420, that's the no reaction, out of the 500. With the given information, the conditional information, you have to just be within that given part. So this probability answer is 420 over 500. Now I have one more conditional probability example to do for this segment. Here it's the probability that the oil is washed off after five minutes, given that it's a strong reaction. So remember, we look at what's after the word given. Given that it's a strong reaction, I find where it says strong reaction, that's here. So I'm only going to look in this row because that's the part that's after the word given. So oil washed off after five minutes just in that row is 120 out of the 140. And these are just some examples of how you would find your probabilities with just straight probabilities, with conditional probabilities, with compounded um, probabilities, if the information is given to you in a table form.